Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 151 of the Note Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg, joined once again by the fabulous Karen Light. Hello. And we're going to discuss sitting with the urge to deviate. So Karen's been on the last two episodes of the show. So if you haven't caught those, you can pause and listen to them now or you can listen to them afterwards. But one of the things we've been discussing, um, and Karen works with creatives or people who don't yet identify as creative, but reclaiming creativity. And one of the things we're discussing is, you know, imagery. And for those of you who draw um, oracle cards or tarot cards or um, get messages through imagery, how it can be tempting when you're feeling stuck and you're wanting that bit of um, external insight if you get the same card or the same image or the same message you'd be like, or if you get one that you don't like you can be like oh I didn't want this I'm going to reshuffle or I'm going to draw another picture or um we were talking Karen does doodling and we went through and created one and one of the things that Karen said at the end of the last episode is that I can use this image again I can take it deeper and interpret it more and how often we when things aren't going the way that we hoped or we're not getting the insight that we want, we can have this urge to deviate and, you know, create something new. So that's what we're going to explore today. So where would you like to start with this, Karen? Yes, I'm so excited to talk about this because it, oftentimes people are doodling with me and they're quick, they're quick little things that we do. And I'm always encouraging them to stick them up, like put it on your wall, let it continue to speak to you ask other people what they see in it, who are in your life, who know you. Um, And another thing that I encourage people to do too, is just to continue doodling on the same doodle, like go back into that one, keep thinking about, oh, I got some insights when I was talking to Karen, but now like, I'm going to take those while I doodle and see where this goes and, and continue with it. It's so easy to, um, I think we're so programmed in this society to keep looking for the next new thing. Like, and we want the quick fix, right? We want the quick fix and we want to be just like, it either works or I move on. Very that, quickly. I'm just going to pause you right there. It yes. either works or I move on. Like if it doesn't happen instantly, then next, if this mm-hmm. coach or this book or this program or this thing doesn't give me instant success, I'm going to move on to the next thing. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. I've never met a shiny object I didn't like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it is sitting in that discomfort and sitting with the, um, and allowing, and I love how you said to share it with people and ask for their insight because it's not about their their judgment or um, another um, entrepreneur that's coming to mind. Have you ever met Kalita Maloof, Karen? No, I haven't. Mm-mm. So um, Kalita, her website, oh, Kalita. Yes, Show Girl I have, Awakening. I have met her, yes. And yeah. for anyone listening, she's been on the show a number of times. I think we've done like six episodes, but um, I see that I see personally the similarity between your work. Like she is about, you know, movement um, and a lot of people attach movement like dance to performance. So it will be critiquing. And I imagine with this, like if I went and showed this to my husband without any context. That's the thing too. Sometimes we listen to a show or or something like this and we have all the context and then we go and, Hey, what do you think of my dance? Or what do you think of my drawing? And then they, they critique it. And we're like, no, that's not what I wanted. And, um, you know, but explaining because when you have someone else's insight onto your movement or your art or your whatever, it's like, what happens for them? What do they experience in their body? Like re unlearning is something you said on a previous episode that stood out for me. Unlearning so we can relearn. Um, because I'm thinking, you know, with young children, I I have learnt with my kids, I if they bring home or when they bring home, we literally had this yesterday. My son brought home <laughs> his art from school. I don't assume what it is. So it's like, tell me about your picture and then have them explain it and how animated they get rather than me making an assumption that it's like an ant um, and then it's not and then him being sad because I've judged it. So I think it's, you know, right. inviting inviting people's, um, what's the opposite of critique? Like their thoughts, but explaining what you want rather than saying, what do you think of this? Um, mm-hmm. I think in the troll society of, of online and, and scrolling and instant things, a lot of us have become fearful of asking for people's interpretation because they will, you know, critique. Like the number of times I can't spell worth shit. 
So people lovingly respond to my things and telling me I didn't spell it wrong or my grammar's poor or whatever. And I now I've got to the point where I don't care, but that used to really take me down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, this, this element of critique, like one of the things like we were talking about in a previous episode of how challenging it is for people who don't see themselves as artists to even do something like draw but you'd be surprised the number of artists who are stuck because of the critique culture of art education. You know, it's like I've spent a lot of time coaching artists and it, when and I've done a lot of group and I've, I've been teaching people to ask for what they want to get feedback on. Like, what mm -hmm. do you want to have that feedback on? What would help you? What would feel good? What would you know, maybe you wanted that arm to be double the size because it meant something to you. But if you don't ask for it in that way, you're going to get feedback that isn't helpful, that shuts down your creativity. So I I really agree with that. And, you know, to kind of tie it back around even to this um, staying focused on something, if you can ask for and share, feel like you can share things in the way you want to share it and you don't you know, set yourself up for horrible judgment and then criticism that you you can't bear. Guess what you do? You stay in it longer. Like you stay in it longer, <laughs> right? Like you keep going. You, it doesn't have to be perfect for you to be okay to continue working on something. Um, and that's really, really important when I'm doing this work with people that, you know, I'm really in the groups. I'm like, this is, I don't even want you to say if it's good. I don't even want you to say that you like it because any judgment, it's not about how good or bad something is, you know, technically we're looking for meaning. We're looking yes. for meaning. And also for you mm -hmm. looking for meaning for you and that meaning for mm -hmm. you might be different to the meaning from the other person. So it's not taking their meaning on as the right one. Like I imagine in groups, what could be challenging. I know for me, when we're in groups and we're given an activity and the way my brain works is very different to the brain, way a lot of brains work. And you know, when it's time to go and go around the room, like part of me dies inside as soon as I just hear, let's go around the room. But, you know, if my interpretation, if everybody's gone part A and I've gone part B and that kind of risk to stand alone and to speak up and say, this is what I thought, um, because, you know, we are descendant from packs and tribes and cultures where it didn't pay to stand out. Um, but have the courage to do that depending on the environment. Sometimes there's such a more rich discussion because even with like this, the doodle that we did in the previous two episodes, when you were saying to draw a spiral, my uh, my immediate thought was that so easy, but it wasn't until after I'd drawn it that I thought the other way that you could do a spiral, you know, like where things spiral up and down, if everybody in the room had done the circular one nice and tight and then someone else had done the other one, that person may feel that it's not safe for them to speak up because theirs is different. Yeah, that's really what I feel my job is um, in those spaces, as a facilitator of those spaces, is to celebrate, you know, all the expressions, to celebrate all the ways that people thought of that thing. And I also invite people to say this very simple thing when they're going to share about somebody else's doodle. If this were my doodle, is what I often have people preface it with. So it just creates a little space, right? Like, you don't have to take that on. I mean you look at art and, or even just listening to music, I feel like everybody can really gravitate towards that, right? You listen to a song that grabs you, it has a meaning to you. It doesn't matter who made it, even necessarily what they made it about. Maybe you're curious and you go figure that out, but it has a meaning to you. And that's the same thing that we're looking at with art. Sometimes you're in a group and somebody shares their doodle and you're interpreting it. It doesn't resonate for them. It, nothing you said resonates for them. Doesn't mean you're wrong. Just maybe means that's something for you. Maybe yeah, you that's the thing. That, that's right? something like, for you. And I love how you, you brought music to it too because sometimes I believe with music it's the energy. I can still remember there's this song. I can't remember the title of it. It's kind of like the Bad Blood or something. It's 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 quite a rude song in terms of the lyrics. And I remember um, it was a hit when I was in high school and one time it was on the radio and my mum turned it up and she's literally like dancing around the house. And I was like, have you ever listened to this song? She's like, the, the tune's catching and whatever. And then she paused it and she's like, oh, 
oh, you know, but it's kind of like she took what she needed. So I think sometimes, and then as a result of that, like if you were torn down or people make an assumption on you because you like this music or, or whatever, but it's like, what are you getting from the piece, the art, the dance, the movement, um, that that's medicine or healing or transformative for you. And as you said, if someone gives their interpretations, take what lands and leave the rest. And perhaps their interpretation is in that case for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it just going back to like going deeper, right? Like you, you can, if it doesn't land for you, that's also cool. Now, you know, something that it isn't about, you know, like, keep using it as an exploratory tool to dig deeper into what this thing could be about. And you were talking about journaling in the last episode too, like you can journal to keep, stay with it and go deeper. Transformation is a word you just brought up that doesn't come without some focus and um, some stick to itness. <laughs> yes. And, you know, it's so important to find those ways to stay in a process. So even sometimes doodling, as a tool is a way that my clients um, can stay in a process, can keep talking about something. And I do a lot of executive function coaching and often with people who identify as creatives. And that just seems like the wrong side of the brain for them. Like, it's like, I'm here because I know I got to fix something, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I think wrong. Uh, you know, they feel like a misfit in society a lot, right? Because our society is very like logical, practical, follow this linear path. And creatives are like, yeah, like I want to go over here and create what I want to create, how I want to create it. But when they're not creating the things they want to create, then it's like, and doodling and bringing that creativity into what could be a very dry process suddenly makes it meaningful and juicy and really relates to the person. You know, it's not just like a one size fits all tool now. Now you've got something that's about you, what you need and how you need to do it versus what works for everybody else. Why doesn't it work for me? That, that point. And the other thing I want to circle back to when you mentioned transformation again, and I think, you know, maybe this will wrap it all together or maybe it will open up a can of worms. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> a tra from my way of looking at things, a transformation is there is a time period with it. A breakthrough can happen in an instant, an insight, an aha, oh, my goodness. Like that's a breakthrough. And I think many of us, become conditioned to chase the breakthrough, which is why we do deviate. We go from coach to podcast to book to resource, chasing the bright, shiny objects because we, we become, you know, breakthrough hungry. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I claim yeah. this for myself. Yes, it's like, this I'm is, with you. This I'm part is you. fun. The mm -hmm. transformation, the consistent and persistent action, it's taking the breakthrough and rewiring your brain to create new patterns of behavior, to become this new version of you that part's not very freaking sexy. So it's kind of like to bring back to the title of this episode, sitting with the urge to deviate, not every time you doodle, not every time you journal, not every time you listen to a piece of music or whatever, are you going to have a breakthrough? It's the, you know, it's the sitting with it, taking it deeper, you know, re-encoding that lesson. So I know a lot of my clients and I know myself too, I get frustrated. I'm like, oh, here's this again. I thought I'd moved through this or yes. I thought I'd learned from this. It's like, ah, oh, I don't want to be here. I want to be over there in something bright and shiny and fun. But when you think about like, you know, musicians, it's funny. Um, we were talking the other day with my kids about um, concert pianists and the hours they have to put in to practice. And then we were watching some documentary about how they transfer those pianos and temperature control it. And like, <laughs> I didn't know any of this stuff. But like <laughs> thousands of hours that they put in to this to be able to play that one piece at a at a concert or whatever, how many of us have the discipline and the wherewithal to stick with that because it's like, well, it's not fun anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, the transformation to be able to do that thing, to present that piece or, or, or you know, if, if music isn't your thing, Olympians, like to run that 10 second, a hundred meter sprint, how many thousands of hours of training and practice and shoes and washing and stuff have gone into this moment. And I think that comes down to the sitting with the urge to deviate. If it doesn't happen instantly, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. No, not at all. And in the episode, you know, the first episode where I had you doodling, we, we started with that spiral and there are many reasons why I love that shape. And one of the reasons I love it is because I think if you look in nature, right? Like most things grow from the spiral 
And we feel that too. It's like that, what you just said, haven't I already been through this enough? But when you think about it as like a spiral that like you grow up with, right? So like, as it comes back around, yes, that's that issue could look exactly the same, but how are you thinking about that issue now? What tools do you have at this point? You know, what? why is it coming at this juncture in your life? And then you can see it as a springboard almost like- Yeah, oh, and now spiraling it- up because you're looking at yes. it sideways rather than down. And if you looked downwards at the spiral, it would look just circular, like all around, around again. Mm-hmm. But if you looked at it from the side, the new lessons and new insights, the new version of you- and if you think yeah. about like nature, it cycles mm-hmm. through the same series of seasons. Like sometimes at the moment we're here, it's technically spring, we're calling it sprummer because they're having like 35 degrees Celsius already. <laughs> but, you know, this this particular spring in 2023 of Australia was very, very short. <laughs> but other oh. years it's extended. So it's the same with you. Like you can be moved through something really quickly in one iteration of you. And later on, it could take longer. Neither are right or wrong or good or bad. Just is. No, I mean, we're in fall here in the States and like the trees don't go, oh, I'm losing my leaves again. No, they <laughs> yeah, no, they, they keep growing taller. And that's just, they, they know. And that's so important too, right? Everything does have that cycle. And I think that helps people to stay with it sometimes too. Like, I don't think it's correct to assume, like, I think it's toxic discipline in a way to think that you can keep doing the same thing all the time with no, like you failed if you didn't work out one day, you know, like we have this mentality that you're just going to fall off the wagon because you didn't work out one day. And it's not, it's not, we're going to have our phases. We're going to have our cycles in that process. There's going to be even in the doodling, right? There's the process of drawing the doodle. Then there's the process of sitting with the doodle. Then there's the process of maybe talking about the doodle. Then the process of maybe forgetting about it and then seeing it again two weeks later and being like, oh, I know what I, you know, like we don't know, you know, exactly when it's all going to happen, but we have to trust in those cycles a bit. And I think that's a whole nother can of worms, but totally, totally. Well, thank you so much for joining me again, Karen, just let the listeners know what you do and where they can find you. Yeah. Hello everyone. I am Karen and I do creative coaching. I have a creative coaching uh, company called how doodle, how doodle.com is where you can find me. You can sign up for um, some amazing free monthly workshops where you can get down into this doodling process. And you can find me on LinkedIn and at YouTube if you want to see this stuff in action as well. So I hope you'll connect there. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.